I was never looking for great feats. I was looking for contrite hearts. God is not looking for what we will do for him. He is looking for our hearts to be right and pure before him. And when our hearts are right and pure, we will rise up as people of power and we will do great feats. And I am gonna run through a whole bunch of scriptures The Bible has a lot to say about circumcision of the heart and about the heart. So I just wanna run through these to lay a foundation. Deuteronomy 10, starting in verse 12, it says, and now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord which I am commanding you today for your good. And then jumping down to verse 16. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no longer stubborn. And so we have this new covenant on the other side of the cross that it's the circumcision of the heart. It's a transformation of who we are on the inside, but we see it from the very foundation of scripture in the Old Testament that God was laying out his plan. And we see it in when Moses was writing to the people And then the purpose in Deuteronomy 30, verse six. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring, so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. How many of you wanna love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul? The way that we get there is he comes and he changes our heart and he circumcises our heart. And who does it? Who does it? It's the Lord your God will circumcise your heart. It's not just something we work up in ourselves, but it's something that God does in us. Jeremiah 31, 30, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Ezekiel 11, 19 to 20, and I will give them one heart, and a new spirit I will put within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my rules and obey them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. And so throughout the the Old Testament, the, the prophets are telling us about this change of heart that God is going to enable in us. And then we come to Romans 2, 29. So now we're on the other side of the cross. A true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law, rather it is a change of heart produced by God's spirit. And a person with a changed heart receives praise from God, not from people. So who's doing it? In Romans, who who does Paul say works this change and produces this change? It's the spirit of God. Again, it's not something that we work up on ourselves, it is something produced by God. And then we come to Galatians 6.15. It doesn't matter whether we have been circumcised or not. What counts is whether we have been transformed into a new creation. God has a plan for us. He has a plan for us. And as we submit to him, he comes and changes us into that new creation. Colossians 2.11. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. Again, who did it? Christ. So we have scriptures that say it's the Father, it's it's the Son, and it's the Holy Spirit. We have a Trinitarian God, and he is the one who comes and works a transformation in our hearts. Galatians 5.14 For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's all about loving God and loving your neighbor. And so when God came and he circumcises our heart, it's a cutting away of the sinful nature. It's a sanctification into holiness is what God is working in us. It becomes a symbol of that circumcision of the heart is a symbol of purity and holiness. 
We are the covenant people of God. He is calling us into a supernatural lifestyle. And as we are entering into that supernatural lifestyle, he is showing up to say, we need to get some things worked right in your life. And there's change of heart that needs to happen because I have an amazing call. I have a work for you to do. There is a work for you to do, but just like Paul talked about the process yesterday, that process needs to change and transform who we are so that we're ready for the call of God in our lives. A number of years ago, I had a a dream. It was a very, very short dream. But in the dream, there was a woman named either Kara or Karina, that's how it was in the dream, I wasn't sure of the name, and she was about to give a water birth. And I woke up. And when I looked up both names, Kara and Karina, both names mean pure. And there is this thing about the body of Christ being born into purity, that we are to be born of both word, born of the water and of the spirit. And so we look at Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus in John 3, verses 3 to 8. Jesus answered him, truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. So we see this this change of heart. It really is that new birth into Christ. And he is changing and he is transforming us by the act and the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 10.22 says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. The Lord wants to do a work in his body. He wants to do a work amongst, amongst the people of God, and he wants to get us changed and transformed into a pure and spotless bride. It is the work of God that he comes and he cleanses us with the washing of the water of his word. And he cleanses us. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He not only forgives our sins, but he actually washes us clean. And so there's just this total freedom that comes in. Psalm 24, it says, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. How many of you want to come into the presence of God? We talk a lot about being people of the presence. We want to be people where the presence of God is thick. That's, I mean, that is what I want in my life. I want him. I want him. I want to be a part of what he's doing, and I want to bring other people into that experience. And so it's who can stand before him. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. And so you might say, well, that's the Old Testament. You know, Jesus came, he did the work on the cross, and it doesn't really matter how I live today because it's all under grace. But Hebrews 12, 14 says, strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Even in the New Testament, we're called into a a lifestyle of holiness, and it's that holy, pure living that brings us before the presence of God. And so about a year ago, I had a dream And so I told you, you know, I saw that passage in Exodus with Moses, and that was when I was a student in Global School of Supernatural Ministry. So that was back probably in 2006 that I I saw that passage. And I've kind of been sitting on this revelation, but I never preached it until I had a dream uh, last summer. And in my dream, I was a mother of a teenage son. Now, I don't have children. I'm not married. I don't have any children. But in the dream, I did. And my son was taking marijuana because he wanted to do um, just incredible feats. He wanted to do, what he wanted to do was he was driving on this curvy highway and he wanted to have no inhibitions so that he didn't have to worry about anything and he could just take those corners really fast. And I saw it on a highway and then I saw him out on a country road and he was doing it on a windy country road. So it was the highways and the byways. 
And then as he's driving on the country road, I saw um, sitting on a front porch, on a house front porch was a bunch of teenagers and they were watching him. And he was doing this to impress them. And I, I was mom in this situation. And I went over and I was very angry. And I started reprimanding these kids. And now my first statement, this is a dream, so don't judge me, okay? <laughs> and my first statement to them was, that is my car. <laughs> I don't know. And then I said, and that is my son, and he's far more valuable than that car. But when we understand that a car is ministry and a life calling, and that is my son, and he's far more valuable than the calling on his life, and I said, how dare you celebrate, celebrate recklessness? How dare you celebrate foolishness? There is no reason for what he's doing right now. And I don't know why he was taking marijuana. I actually, you know, I'm a good Christian girl. I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. But I, I was like, the only thing, when I prayed about it, the only thing I could see is that in our culture, marijuana is, it's not legal, but is it really that bad? You know, it, it's, people take it and there's that, well, it's not really that bad. And I feel like there's a lot of that happening in the body of Christ. It's not really in, in line with God's word, but how bad is it really? And so I'm reprimanding these, these kids and I turned and I walked away. And as I walked away, I heard the Lord say, I was never looking for great feats. I was looking for contrite hearts. God is not looking for what we will do for him. He is looking for our hearts to be right and pure before him. And when our hearts are right and pure, we will rise up as people of power and we will do great feats. But we need to have our motivation right. We need to have a pure heart before the Lord so that when we go out to the highways and byways, we are ministering out of love for God and love for people, not so that we can impress someone else. <laughs>